So my video on the potential pure perfect analog format, if it could one day exist, attracted a few comments. And there was one comment which was particularly interesting. In the video, I was mostly talking about uh, something which could replace vinyl uh, to give us analog audio in a very good sound quality. And I brushed over on the way, I brushed over FM radio as a potential analog source. Well, I'm having a few rosy recollections going back to the 1970s here of when FM radio was FM radio, <laughs> in my view. And uh, I missed out a bit, which my memory should have inserted, but it failed to do so. But fortunately, a commenter has managed to do it for me. And we've got a very good comment here from at North Surrey, who is a, obviously a YouTube user. And he doesn't have any numbers after his username. He's very fortunate in that regard. So I've got the comment just here and I'm going to read it out pretty much word for word. I'm not sure you can call FM radio analogue. The end-to-end -end system is mostly digital with all playout and sound decks in the BBC and most non-BBC radio being digital. These feed digital routers, which in turn feed digital distribution systems. Only the modulation done in the FM transmitters and demodulation in the listeners' receivers are analogue. Well, yes, of course, this is today. Everything's done digitally. And as he points out, which is uh, absolutely correct, only these two places have analog processing in the transmission and in the receiving. So, yeah, it's digital. But going back into the past, the, di the BBC's distribution system has been digital since the early 1970s. Annoyingly, BBC Radio is likely to be the first digital audio most people over a certain age ever heard in the UK. The original system was 32 kilohertz PCM, followed by NICAM in the late 1980s. Near instantaneous compounding audio multiplex, from memory. Both were non-lossy formats, although NICAM stretched that definition a bit, as it used 10 bits shifted over the dynamic range of the audio. Now, we've got a bit of a technical term there, non-lossy. I think I would call that lossless. I'm sure those terms mean exactly the same thing, non-lossy and lossless. So... These days, in the modern era, uh, we have lossy encoding in the form of MP3 and AAC. MP3 was remarkable in its day, and AAC is actually pretty good now. And the way these systems work is using psychoacoustic processing to identify the stuff in the data stream that we can't hear, and they throw it away. <laughs> so anything which isn't of any use to us, it just gets uh, dumped, in the, um, dumped in the trash, as you might say. So that's a lossy system, but we're talking about non-lossy or lossless formats here because lossy systems hadn't been invented at this point. Someone might correct me on that even, but we'll just pass over that for the moment. Non-lossy formats, lossless formats, it means that it converts everything to digital. Everything that's in the analog system, it converts as well as it can to digital, including the stuff we can't hear. <laughs> That's very interesting when you think about it, and I'm going to come back to this. I'm definitely going to come back to this topic in the future. Anyway, this is all really good stuff. I'm going to press on. Arguably, back in the 1970s, the best quality music it was possible to hear were live concerts on Radio 3. These were unprocessed and analogue from the source to the continuity street suite in Broadcasting House, then digital to the main transmitters. Later, digital lines were used from the venue, firstly via the Sony PCM F1 system and later on B British Telecom supplied digital lines and uplinks. If you had a good tuner getting a good signal, then the quality was stunning. And I had a good tuner and I got a good signal and the quality, it was very good indeed. When sitting in the studio and comparing the received audio to a high quality receiver, the only difference was some noise inherent in the FM multiplex system. That's the multiplex is how FM gets its stereo. FM in its unprocessed native form is very good, but its potential as a high quality medium is now rarely fulfilled due to audio processing. I think we've gone on to a slightly different subject there. It's, it's what uh, broadcasters do to the audio to make it more palatable to the listener in their, in their minds. That's another subject and uh, maybe I'll cover that at some point. So that's an excellent comment and it made me want to explore this matter further. So I managed to get my hands on a, a copy of it's on the other side here. BBC Engineering Division Monograph, number 75, December 1968. Wow, 1968, that is a long time ago. And the title of this monograph, Pulse Code Modulation for High Quality Sound Signal Distribution. Pulse Code Modulation, this is how we do digital audio today. 
And this is back in 1968. So clearly this goes back a long, long way. So I'm not going to go through all of the contents because it really is quite technical. And I probably will look through it to see, this, see if there's bits I can isolate out for my videos. But I am going to read through the conclusions of this because it is quite interesting. So from a survey of known art, it is concluded that pulse code modulation should be capable of satisfying present and foreseeable future requirements for a high quality sound signal distribution network. Experimental coding and decoding equipment has been constructed. The results show that it is possible to engineer an 11 bit system having a performance close to that predicted by theory. From the experience obtained, it is concluded that an efficient 12 digit, 12 bit it means I think, system is practical, practicable. 12 bits. <laughs> wow. It's 1968, remember. It has also been shown that there is sufficient redundant time available in the 625 line video waveform to include the accompanying sound signal in the form of a 10 bit PCM signal. And that by the use of an appropriate compounding system, a satisfactory sound envision distribution system could be designed. That is NICAM. That is exactly NICAM, which was pretty much a revolution when it came out in the UK. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to put a card in the corner, I don't know which corner it's going to come, of the original video. So uh, when people pass through the FM radio section, they can, if they wish, come to this video. And of course, there's always space for your further comments down below. That's it for today. See you soon.